that feed from your tears. The altar now is broken in the name of Jesus. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken in the name of Jesus. It is broken. It is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. The Bible says we must be fruitful and have dominion. I have started a new series on dominion and fruitfulness. I want you to know God never created you to be barren or unproductive. Some of you that have been laboring for a long time and you never saw any fruits of your labor, join me in this very series I'm beginning and your life will never be the same. It will be fruitfulness and dominion. That's what I'll be dealing with. And I want you to be part of this. So all our viewers never miss any of this series. God bless you. Shalom. Genesis chapter number 8, verse number 17 reads, Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. You remember after the flood that took about uh, 40 days, the flood, and it took about 150 days for the water to recede from the earth. And after the water receded, it was now the time for Noah to come out of the ark. And the Lord speaks to Noah and he says, come out of the ark with every living thing. Come out of that ark with every cattle, with every animal, with everything that creepeth on the ground. And go out there. And I want you to do what? to take dominion again. He goes back to what he said to Adam in the beginning. Because after the Noah, human life, humans were wiped away. Humankind was wiped. There was no one 
So it was only Noah and his family that were preserved during that time. So when it was the time for Noah to come out of the ark, the Lord again pronounces the blessing that he pronounced upon who? Upon Adam and Eve. He says again to Noah, he says, you go out there that they may breed abundantly in the earth, be fruitful and multiply in the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. And it's the same thing that he spoke to Adam. That's our foundation scripture. When God released Adam into the earth, he pronounced a blessing over him. He says, you go, be fruitful and multiply and take dominion. And he comes back to Noah and he says the same thing. Go out there, be fruitful, abundantly so, multiply into the earth. Which tells us to say, whenever God releases his people into the earth, into this world, he does not release them empty. When you are born from your mother's womb, you are not released empty. You are released with the blessing of fruitfulness. You are released with a blessing of dominion. You are released with a blessing of increase. You are released with a blessing of multiplication. So you are not on your own because God knows that while we are here on earth for us to be able to have dominion for us to be able to rule according to his word we need to be fruitful and we need to multiply and we need to increase hallelujah what is fruitfulness fruitfulness is being productive or conducive to produce abundance fruitful Activity multiplies or adds to what's already there. Producing more of something. For example, if we say a couple is fruitful, they have got children. And the more they have children, the more fruitful they are. Right. When the word of God is being preached, there must be a fruit. And what is the fruit? The fruit is the signs and wonders. The Bible says that when the word is preached, it's going to be backed up by what? By signs and wonders. And those signs and wonders are the fruit. When you are running your business, when it produces profits, it means your business is being what? Is being fruitful. So fruitfulness is being productive. Three keys on how to cultivate a fruitful life. Number one, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Leaning on your own knowledge. Leaning on what you know. He says trust in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord means putting everything in him, putting your confidence in him, relying on him, depending on him for every move that you take. And he says, lean not on your own understanding. You are not going to depend even not on your education. Of course, it will contribute to your fruitfulness. But you are not going to totally depend on it. You are not going to depend on your skills alone. But you will depend on God's wisdom. You will depend on his understanding. You will depend on him to lead you and to direct him. Life is unpredictable. Even with the best plans and intentions, no one can predict for sure what will come their way. But God knows we can have our plans. We can, we can plan our future. It is okay to plan. But after we have planned, we need to commit our plans unto the Lord. That's why he says, submit your way unto the Lord. And he will do what? He will make it successful. So when we plan, 
When we plan our lives, when we plan our businesses, when we plan our families, after we have planned, we commit our plans unto the Lord and allow him to make our plans successful. Because you do not know, you cannot predict what will happen to you tomorrow. But God knows. The reason why we need to trust God is because God knows your tomorrow. And he holds your tomorrow. You can't depend on God to sharpen your skills. You can't depend on God to become a better wife. You can't depend on God to become a better father. After all, he is the father. So he knows best how the father should behave. You can depend on God on your business. He can teach you skills. You can depend on him on how to become a good mother, how to raise children, especially in our time and in our season that it is so much challenging to raise a child. I was just talking to my daughters yesterday on the breakfast table. I'm like, it is becoming so hard for the parents. It's becoming so challenging. Because every moment you hear about the child's rights, the child has got a right to terminate at 12 years old without the parent's consent. A child can go and take any medical test and the doctor can refuse to give you results because your child is 12 years old and she is entitled to her privacy and confidentiality. The children are entitled to have shelter. The children are entitled to be protected by their parents. The children are entitled to go to school. They are entitled to be, to be provided for. But in all these things, which one is the right of the parents? Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From the 29th of March to the 31st of March, it's going to be the Good Friday weekend. And during this time, we hold what we call Freedom Conference. I want you to join us on Friday. It will be in the morning at 10 and it will be in the evening at 6. On Saturday, it will be morning and evening. On Sunday, it's resurrection service. I need you to come and experience the power of his death and resurrection. It will be a great moment in the presence of God. I invite all of you, Mzansi, to our Easter conference here in the city of Mbombela. God bless you and see you there. The child is entitled. It is their right. Right now they are telling us a 12-year-old girl can get pregnant and you as a parent, you have got no right if she says she wants to terminate. Where is the right of the parent? And you can see that slowly the devil is taking over our children. The devil is taking over our world. There is no way my 12-year-old can do things with the doctor without my consent as a, as, a, as a parent. Never. And it is until we stand up, we rise up as children, as, as mothers, as parents, and take control of our homes. The devil is stealing. The government is stealing our children. Right now, they are busy talking about, is it LGBT, whatever it is. That right now, you cannot address a person as him or her. What, 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 what nonsense is that? Where are we heading to? And as a church, we have to, con to, to, to conform to that. But it is, it, is, it, it is about time that we rise up as, as Christian parents. Start to raise morals in your homes. Start to take charge in your homes. Fathers, take charge. Start teaching and imparting the godly things in your children. Otherwise, we have got no future. We have got no future. People are getting angry. People are reporting people to, 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 to authorities to say, why are you making this girl always wearing pink clothes? Why are you, you must leave her to decide whether she, is a, she wants to be a boy or she wants to be a girl. What nonsense is that? What determines the sex of a person? Come out of social media. Know what is happening in the lives of your children. Know what they are doing. Know what they are thinking. Be involved. 
Don't just lay down there. You are busy watching soapy after soapy. It's, it's TikTok after TikTok. These things will not finish. You are doing that and your children are perishing. You don't know there is an, a hooligan out there who is busy abusing your child. We have stopped to trust God. That's why in this house, we believe in family. We believe marriage is between a man and a woman, a male and a female. According to the institution of God, if God wanted men and men to get married, he would have created Adam and Adam. This thing is becoming out of hand, man. It is becoming out of hand. Stop it. That's why monitor your children very, very well. Monitor them. I'm telling you the truth. Monitor them. You've got a boy child every time he's going to your room, taking lipstick, wearing weave, doing like this. Uh-uh. Boys don't walk like this. What is going on? A behavior of a child can be murdered. I say this with all humility. I had a child who was like that as well. When Jonathan was growing up, maybe it's because I so badly wanted a girl. And the devil takes advantage of that spirit. That's why when God, when you get pregnant, be ready to have whether a boy or a girl. Whichever the Lord will bring to you, be ready to receive it. Because some of these people, they have got a spirit. Once you be like, yo, I want a baby girl. I want a baby girl. I want, because I so much wanted a girl. Let me tell you, the devil takes advantage of that. And God wants you to have a son. And the devil imparts and possesses the spirit of a girl just upon birth. Ha! This child is like, ah. every time you want to wear a dress, you look for the sister's dress. You want to wear high shoes, you go in my room, steal the high shoes, and he wants to walk on my shoes. I, I watch like this behavior. I washed it, I sniffed it. I washed, I sniffed. I washed, I sniffed. I said, this, I have to stop it. I have to stop this. It's not in my house, never. Not under my watch, never. It's not going to happen. I'm like, hey, Fana. Can you stop these things? Sometimes you walk and hit himself here. <laughs> hey, 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 mommy. I'm like, never. Boys, they don't do like that. You better stop doing this nonsense that you are doing in this house. You better stop. I must never see you touching my shoes again. I started to mod and to correct it. And right now, he's, all of a sudden, the step changed. Now he moves like a man. All of a sudden, he starts to understand himself that he's a man. So be watchful as parents because what they are doing is what they are seeing. You have exposed them to social media. They are seeing these behaviors. And all of a the sudden, they want to behave like them. You are a girl child. You want to be walking like a boy. You want to be dressing like a boy. And you are empowering it as a mother. You go to the shops, he's pointing boy clothes. And you as a mother, you are buying. God forbid. May the rod of Jehovah be upon you. You are empowering that because the child, he says that he wants the boy sneakers. There are no girl sneakers. You go to the barber shop, you cut the hair like a boy, but you're a girl. That's why in this church, I don't like even this habit of girls cutting hair anyhow. Unless they have grown up, they are women, they are matured enough, they understand themselves very well. But in today's life, you cannot trust to give haircuts of boys to girls. Because you just don't know what kind of a spirit you are feeding. Let them plait their hair. Let them tie ribbons. Let them go to the saloon. Let them wear dresses. Let them wear heels. Buy them a handbag. Small one. 
Put lip gloss there. Put a comb there. Put tissue there. And put a mint. Let them know that they are women. Let them start to carry themselves as ladies, as young as they are. Stop empowering the spirit of lesbianism and gayism. We have the responsibility as parents to take charge. Parents, children are not there to rule our homes. You hear? We will tell you things that you don't like, you must just do. You are not there to say your voice. We are here to train you. Because tomorrow it is us that will stand before the Lord. You are a gift and we are custodians of that gift. Yeah. Hallelujah. So trusting in the Lord helps us to be fruitful. It gives us the, the, he gives us the, 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 the success. He makes our ways to be straight when we trust God. So you can trust God even on how to raise your children. God can be trusted. He has never made a mistake. Every person God's hand was upon, they were very successful. They were never defeated in anything unless a person decided to move from the shadow of the Lord. But every person that the hand of the Lord was upon them, every person that allowed God to, to, to lead them, they were very successful. So we can be successful even in our parenthood. We can be successful in our businesses. We can be successful in our careers when we trust God. We can be successful in our relationship. So we stay connected to the power, the power which is Jesus Christ. And how do we stay connected? We stay connected in prayer. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. You can also download this entire sermon on our YouTube channel, which is Holy Ghost Firehouse TV. Very important, and it's going to help you. Now, you are here and you said, I listened to your sermon, Bishop. How can I be helped? Listen, you can call the number appearing on the screen now. Alternatively, you can fellowship with one of our branches across the nation, and you're going to understand the power of fruitfulness and the power of dominion. I invite you to call me or else come and fellowship with us and your life will never be the same. We love you. Shalom. Bye-bye. To all our viewers at home, thank you for joining us. If you would like to fellowship with us, please visit us at 12 Samora Michelle Street in the city of Mabela every Tuesday at 11 a.m., Saturday at 6 p.m. and Sunday at 8 a.m. Our ministry hosts a bookshop stocked with different books written by Bishop Dr. Alex and other reputable men of God that will help you towards your spiritual growth. For access to a vast library of digital content, visit our YouTube page Holy Ghost Fire TV and subscribe for free to stay up to date with the latest material from our ministry. You can also join Morning Glory on Bishop Alex's Facebook account, Bishop Alex Cole, which is a time of prayer, word and prophecy every Monday to Saturday at 5 to 7 a.m. We look forward to fellowshipping with you.